Good morning, guys. Welcome to Vlogmas Day 4. Is it day 4 already? Oh my god. If you can't tell from the look of my face, I just woke up. But I'm about to wash my hair, and I thought that I would share my full, like, wet to dry routine with my hair. All of the products that I use on it, how I style my hair, the styling tools that I use. So I'll typically wash my hair, like, every three to four, sometimes five days. Sometimes I can stretch it out a little bit longer. Like today, for example, today is Thursday. I washed my hair Monday morning and it's not terrible. Like I definitely could add a little more dry shampoo to it and I could like put it in a braid or wear it up in a ponytail or something like that and it would be fine. But I don't know, I'm just feeling like kind of blah and I feel like because I'm vlogging, I just want my hair to look fresh and clean. So in my shower, what I've been using regularly to cleanse my hair with is the Oribe Gold Lust Shampoo and Conditioner. I started using both of these when I got my hair done like maybe three weeks ago. And then every so often I will use this Pulp Riot Barcelona Purple Shampoo. It's very intense, very pigmented, as you can see. I just used it the last time that I washed my hair, so I'm not gonna be using it today. I'm just gonna use the Gold Lust Shampoo and Conditioner. And the Purple Shampoo, if you didn't know, it neutralizes any yellowy warm tones in blonde hair. So I like to use the Purple Shampoo to just keep it a little bit more on like the ashy or cool tone side. <laughs> So I just got out of the shower and what I like to do next is brush through my hair. So I love these brushes from Framar. You can get them at Cosmoprof or even on Amazon, I believe. I'll link it in the description. It's amazing. I like this way better than the wet brush or any kind of like tangle teaser type of brush that I've used. It's really gentle because the bristles are flexible. So it's not going to apply too much tension to your hair. So if there is a knot anywhere, it's going to like gently brush it out as opposed to just like ripping right through it and breaking your hair. But I like this one specifically because I feel like even though it is gentle, it does the best job of detangling the hair. Like some of the other ones I feel are almost a little bit too gentle that they just don't do anything and it takes forever. So I like to start on the ends and I go section by section and I will hold some tension on my hair as I'm brushing through. Rather than starting up here and just ripping through, like if I do that, it just gets stuck here anyway. Um, and it's just gonna cause too much trauma to my hair. So like the most effective way to gently brush through your hair and get rid of any tangles is to start from the bottom, hold a little tension so that you're not like yanking at your scalp. I'm just gonna leave it now and I like to let it air dry as much as possible before I start blow drying it so that it makes the blow drying time faster. So A, it's easier for me, it's less work, but B, that way I'm applying less heat to it as well. So I am actually going to apply a face mask in the meantime. Just flip this out of the way. And I'm going to apply the Ole Henriksen Fat Glow Facial. I showed you guys this earlier in the week. This just like helps with texture, smooths out your skin, gives it a nice glow. And I love it. It's one of my favorite masks that I've ever tried. And you guys actually left me a lot of really great mask recommendations as well. So I'm definitely going to be checking some of those out because a lot of the ones that I have are like running really low. So while I have my mask on, because I think this has to sit for about 15 minutes, I'm going to make some coffee and breakfast. I'm going to do a smoothie for breakfast today. For a really long time, I was doing so well. I was really like eating super healthy. I was active. I was going on walks. And the last few months, I've really been slacking. Like I've just been getting a lot of take out food I haven't been eating as many like fruits and vegetables as I should and I have not been active at all like I can't even tell you when's the last time that I exercised it's really bad so I kind of want to slowly try to ease myself back into it rather than just like waiting for the new year and making it like my new year's resolution and doing it cold turkey so yeah I'm gonna have a smoothie for breakfast let me put my coffee to make first and today we are having Folgers Gourmet Supreme, medium to dark roast. 
So for my smoothie, I use a Nutribullet, and I love this thing. I bought this when I first moved into this apartment, and it's just so convenient because you just have this little container, and you can just drink your smoothie straight out of it, and you don't have to have like this big, huge blender that you need to be cleaning every time. So this portion of the vlog is actually sponsored by Teamy. Thank you so much to them for working with me. You guys are probably familiar with Teamy for their teas as the name would suggest, but they actually just recently came out with some dietary supplements as well. So they sent over their greens superfood blend and I was actually really excited to try it because like I said, especially lately, but even normally, like when I am eating healthy, I feel like I can eat fruit all day long, but when it comes to vegetables and especially like leafy greens, I definitely don't eat as much as I probably should. So this greens superfood blend doesn't have any fillers or additives, no artificial flavors, no artificial colors no artificial chemicals. It has 16 superfood ingredients. It's 100% plant-based, vegan, GMO-free, gluten-free, and dairy and soy-free. And if you look at the actual ingredients here, there's nothing in it that's like some weird chemical that you can't pronounce. Like it's all actual foods. So this is what the powder looks like and it comes with a little scooper. So one scoop is one serving and for me it's just been a really great way to get in those leafy greens that lack in my diet so for my smoothie what i like to do is put a little bit of baby spinach in here and i already had the spinach but technically i don't need to add this in here because that powder does have spinach in it already and then i like to use unsweetened coconut milk for my liquid base and then i'm going to add in my scoop of powder and then I put the lid on and I just blend this all up so that it then makes more room for my frozen fruit. So for my frozen fruit, <laughs> this looks disgusting, but I have a bag of frozen bananas. I just take them, peel them, cut them in half, and then I put them in this bag. Frozen bananas, if you've never added it to your smoothie, it's a game changer. It just makes it so creamy and it adds that extra sweetness. So I'm gonna put half of a frozen banana in there. And then I just like to get bags of different kinds of mixed frozen fruit. This has been my favorite for a while, tropical berry and coconut. It has pineapple, strawberries, mangoes, and coconut in it. Just pour that in all the way to the top, basically. I like my smoothies to be very filling and I also like them to be really thick and creamy. I don't like them to be, you know, like more on the watery, liquidy side. So then I just drink it straight out of the blender cup itself and it's great because it saves me on dishes. And then I have these glass straws that I got from Amazon. Mm. It's nice and thick, just how I like it. <laughs> Personally, I would much rather drink a green smoothie like this than have to have like a whole bunch of big salads, you know? So if you guys wanna try the Teamy Greens Superfood Blend, I will have a link to it in the description. And thank you so much again to Teamy for sponsoring this portion of the vlog. Here's my breakfast for the day. I'm gonna go wash off this face mask and then I'm gonna sit on the couch and get caught up on other people's Vlogmas videos and just continue letting my hair air dry and then I will catch up with you when I'm ready to blow it out. So as you can see my hair at this point is getting pretty dry. I would say at this point like 80% of the moisture is out of it. So I keep this little basket, it's from Walmart I'm pretty sure, with all of my blow drying supplies. So the first step is I use the Wella Thermal Image Heat Protectant Spray. Give it a good shake and I spray this all over my hair to help protect my hair from heat damage. And then the blow dryer that I use is from the brand Rusk. This is their Super Freak blow dryer. Honestly, the blow dryer that you use really doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that 
it's powerful enough and that you're using this concentrator. This is key. And before I start like sectioning it and getting my brush out and everything, I like to just give it like a little rough dry just so I can take even more moisture out of it. So I'm gonna use it on the hottest setting and the highest speed. That's just gonna help make this process even quicker. So now I'm gonna go through and section my hair. I'm just gonna use my disgusting beat up old round brush that I should probably get rid of because these bristles are like all janky. Yeah, I definitely need a new one. <laughs> Note to self, next time you go to Cosmo Prof, get yourself a new round brush, okay. So I'll just kind of let you watch what I do there's not really like a specific technique like my main goal because I'm gonna add waves to my hair afterwards anyway so my main goal is to just kind of like get it dry and smooth it out and get rid of like the frizz so I'll just show you this first section and then I'll kind of like explain what I'm doing after And the reason that I use a round brush as opposed to just like a regular paddle brush is because I can wrap my hair around this nice and tight and get really good tension. The key when you're blow drying your hair is having control and tension. That's why having this concentrator is really nice because all of the air, rather than just blowing around all over the place and blowing the hair in a million different directions, it's concentrating all the air. And you can see like I'm getting a nice tight grip, I'm holding a lot of tension and I'm pointing the nozzle in a downward direction. So now I'm gonna let this down and I'm just gonna section off the top. So everywhere else, as you saw, I didn't have like a very specific kind of technique. I was just keeping tension, but I was rolling over and under and from the sides. The only part where I'm a little bit more specific is with these two front pieces. I'm going to take my brush on top of the hair and I'm going to roll back, but pull forward like this. This is going to over direct the hair so that it gives it like that nice swoop in the front. So you see how it gives it like that natural little like swoop. So I'm going to section my hair again, same exact way as when I was blow drying it. And then for my waves, I just use a regular standard curling iron. This one in particular is from the brand Cricut. I don't know the exact um, size of this barrel, but I want to say it's either a one and a quarter inch or one and a half inch. So I just go through and I take sections of hair that are about the same size, like same width as the curling iron barrel. And then I open it up like this with the clamp part facing up and I start towards the top of the section and then I curl it away from my face, wrap it around once, hold it there for a couple seconds, slowly kind of loosen it down, untwist, wrap around again. And then at the end, I just pull it straight down. I don't curl like all the way to the very end. I like the ends to be a little bit straighter because that's what gives it that more like beachy, messy, wavy look as opposed to like a traditional curl so same thing with the clamp facing upwards i'm going to close that down wrap it around once going away from my face let it down a little bit untwist and then depending on how long your hair is you might be able to twist it around a couple more times um 
and then just pull straight through down to the end. One thing that I notice people will do incorrectly and what I used to mess up all the time is twisting it in the wrong direction. So if I were to do it like this, for example, you see how like I'm curling against the barrel? That's gonna create that disgusting <laughs> crimp in the hair. So you wanna make sure that you are going with the direction of the barrel and not against that clamp so that everything is going to be nice and smooth and you're not going to have those little crinkles and honestly it's one of those things where it's going to be awkward the first few times you're doing this and you're going to get frustrated but you got to just keep practicing and eventually once you figure it out it just kind of becomes like muscle memory your hands will just kind of like know what to do and you'll be able to do it without even thinking about it before I let that down, I'm going to spray these with some hairspray. So I'm spraying those while they're still hot with hairspray, which just got in my mouth. <laughs> this is the Paul Mitchell Invisible Wear Undone Texture Hairspray. Love this stuff. I use it at the salon on all of my clients. It gives like nice texture and hold without feeling crunchy or sticky. Everything that I'm using, I'll link in the description for you guys. So moving on to the next section. I'm just going to do the exact same thing. So once I'm done curling my entire head and I've sprayed everything down with that hairspray, I just wait till it is completely cool because you don't want to start messing with the curls while they're still warm. When they're warm, they're still like moldable. So you want to make sure you're giving them a chance to set. And then once they've set, I like to just go through and kind of shake them out, run my fingers through it a little bit, pull them apart just so that they are a little bit messier and not like these perfect curls, you know? You can see a difference between this side and then this side. Like, this just has like a lot more body to it. So do the same thing on this side. And then the last step that I'll do is add a little bit of dry shampoo to my hair. This is a trick, I've mentioned this a million times I feel like, but using dry shampoo on day one clean, freshly styled hair will work proactively to help prevent your hair from getting greasy as quickly. It also gives nice texture and a little body. I really like the Not Your Mother's Beach Babe texturizing dry shampoo. You can get this at the drugstore. It's very inexpensive. And if you love the smell of toasted coconut like I do, you'll love this. So I just go through and pick my hair up, shake it up, and hold it at a distance. You don't want to be too close up. And I also do short little pulses. I don't just hold down on the nozzle the whole time because then you're going to spray out way too much product and it's going to end up feeling dirty, which we don't want. We just want a little bit. And then I just go through and kind of rub it in at the roots where I sprayed it. That is everything that I use on my hair. That's how I style it. So I'm going to go get dressed now. So here is my outfit for today. Very comfy. Very neutral. <laughs> this cropped sweatshirt is from Urban Outfitters. I want to say I got it like a year or two ago. And then these joggers are the 90s joggers from Misguided. And then I have my Adidas as we goes on. I just have a few errands to run. I ordered a couple things online that I need to pick up in store at Old Navy and Abercrombie. And then I have something I want to return to Target. And then I need to stop at my mom's job. The apartment that I live in, it, there's not really like a safe place to drop off packages. So I usually just have everything get shipped to my parents' house and then, you know, 
I just get it from them. So yeah, she has a package for me and I'm pretty sure I know what it is. And I'm really excited. Oh, and then I do have one client scheduled today for 2.30, but it's kind of a similar situation to yesterday, if you saw that vlog, where she booked her appointment online, but she never confirmed it. And this is someone who's come to me a few times before, and I feel like every time she books an appointment, she ends up rescheduling it. So I honestly don't even know if she's showing up or not. So we'll see. First stop, Old Navy. Michael's is also right next door, and I really am tempted to go in there and look at their Christmas decor, but I don't think I'm going to have time next time. I'll be back, Michael's. All right, I got my Old Navy order. Now I'm headed to the outlet mall to pick up my order from Abercrombie & Fitch. <laughs> I'm kind of cutting it close with time, so I'm hoping that it's not busy and I can just run in, grab it, and go. Thanks. You're welcome. So guess what? My client didn't show up, but I was kind of expecting that. So she's now been blocked from booking future appointments. I definitely need to be a little bit stricter about confirming people's appointments. Like they'll get a text that will remind them of their appointment and ask them to confirm. But I feel like if people don't confirm within like 48 hours, I'm just gonna take their appointment out because it's ridiculous. Like this exact same thing happened to me yesterday. Luckily I had other things to do today, so I was already out anyway. But had I just gotten dressed and ready and like went to the salon just for that and then she didn't show up, I would have been so pissed. And I am also very lucky because I live very close to the salon, but Imagine if I had to drive like 30 minutes or more to get to work. All that gas mileage in that time would have been for nothing. But thank you guys for being here because at least I have YouTube <laughs> to rely on income wise. So stuff like that isn't like as big of a hit as it otherwise would be. I'm so excited. The package is what I thought it was going to be. So I have an addition to my merch line. If you guys didn't know, I have merch. Um, the link to it is always in the description of every video, but I wanted to come out with like a holiday design just for this time of year. So it says jolly, merry, cheerful, and a little tired. So I have this one on a hoodie. It's so soft. If you haven't ordered any of my merch, the hoodies are really, really soft and cozy. I love them. So this is just like a sample one that they sent me. I think I'm going to make, because this red on my computer was more of like a deeper red and on the actual sweatshirt it's looking more like a peachy kind of color so i think i'm just gonna make it a deeper brighter red more like my nails and we're gonna have this in hoodies and t-shirts and it'll be available in white or black because i know a lot of you guys were saying that you wanted more um options in black so as soon as i get home i'm gonna send those edits over to them and then hopefully if it's not already up on the website and available by the time you're watching this it should be within the next couple of days so make sure you're following me on instagram at styled by sam Vey. that's where i'll announce once it's available and then in old navy while i ran in to pick up my order i passed by a wall of beanies and they were so soft and so thick and I just really loved this neutral cream colored one. It actually matches the sweatpants I'm wearing today perfectly. And then what I had ordered online, I got two packs of reusable face masks. So I got this camo one, which to be honest, I really just liked these three the most. I loved the pink camo, the plain pink, and then the tan camo and then i got the animal print one so it comes with a gray and a cream color and then these animal prints and then from abercrombie i'm just like in the parking lot of my mom's job <laughs> just like opening packages actually you know what i guess i'll wait until i get home so i can show this to you guys and that way i can like try it on but I just got two things. I had a gift card to there, so I figured I'd take advantage of their Cyber Monday sale. So now I'm just gonna run to Target and return something really quick, and then I'm gonna head home. So here's one of the items that I got from Abercrombie. It's this little cropped sweater. It's so soft, like so, so soft and so cozy. But I like how it's 
you know, a little bit oversized. I got it in a medium. I kind of feel like I could have even went up to a large, so it would be like a little bit more slouchy, but I mean, this fits fine too. And then I could even like wear a tank top or something underneath and then wear it open like a cardigan as well. And then here's the second item. It's a bodysuit, but I didn't feel like putting it on properly, um, but I also got this in a medium it's very very stretchy and i love the color of it this brown is like very in right now and then here's the hoodie from my merch line and for reference this is also a size medium so it fits pretty baggy i would just go with your true size depending on how you want it to fit if you want it to be a little bit more snug go down a size if you want it to be looser you can go up a size but i just thought that this would be super cute because all of us who work during the holiday season even if you don't just like the holidays in general are very chaotic so it's like yeah it's a really great wonderful time of the year but like it's also exhausting and then like i said i'm going to make this a little bit more intense so it'll be more like the color of my nails and then there will be a version on black as well and then the text here will just be white so i thought that i would do the question of the day at the end of each Vlogmas video, I'm answering your questions that you leave me in the comments of the previous day's video. So if you have a question that you want me to answer in tomorrow's vlog, leave it down in the comments. The first question is from BT. Who is your favorite true crime YouTuber? So I love Kendall Ray. If you guys have been watching my vlogs for a while, you probably know that. I'm always watching her videos and always listening to her and her husband's podcast, Mile Higher podcast. And then I also really love Stephanie Hart. Arlo. She really dives deep into every case she talks about and I really love her videos. Two people actually asked me if I wasn't doing YouTube or hair, what would I love to do as a career? Honestly, I do really love content creation. I love digital design, videography, all of that kind of stuff. So I would probably do like social media marketing and content creation for brands which i did kind of do if you don't know before i went to cosmetology school i worked as an internet marketer for a private marketing agency but the reason why i didn't like working there and i ended up quitting is because a lot of the clients that i was assigned to work with were in fields that i knew nothing about and i had no interest in for example some of the clients were like construction equipment dealers they just sold like tractors and excavators and stuff like that like i don't know anything about that so i would love to do that for other salons maybe or like beauty companies Lacey asked what was your first ever job so technically when I was in high school I did babysit for our neighbors but my first like actual job where I would get like a real paycheck I worked at a water park as a cabana waitress I just worked there for one summer it was a pretty shitty job to be honest I worked very long hours we didn't get breaks we had to be on our feet all day like out in the sun and I'm also a very very bad server so that is going to be it for this vlog though thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to leave more questions in the comments of this video so i can answer them tomorrow and like i said follow me on instagram and keep an eye out this merch will hopefully be available within the next couple of days i'll keep you posted i'll post also on the community tab on here as well once it's available to purchase thank you guys so much for watching your support seriously means everything to me. I can't thank you enough. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.